Hello, it's Matt O'Leary, and it's time for New Music Monthly for the month of August, where I cover a number of new released albums from the past month, uh, sometimes a little before then. Really, my goal with these episodes is to turn you on to great music in the worlds of progressive rock and indie and pop and alternative and a little jazz thrown in there, a little bit of metal, uh, kind of my own unique blend. And I really want to get in every episode like two to three unknown gems, but I also want to cover the albums I'm anticipating the most, you know, and those could be some of the big hitters, some of the big sellers from a given month. And then the third category would be disappointments. You know, if there's an album I'm really anticipating and I feel it misses the mark, then I want to let you know. And this first album is from members of the bands Converge and High on Fire. It's their fourth album together, but their first one in six years. It's the band Mutoid Man with Mutants. This is a power trio, and really these guys have more talent in their pinky fingers than most bands do in total. Mutoid Man is kind of a stoner rock and prog rock combo with some fun elements of punk and hardcore music and, uh, you know, mostly clean vocals. There are a few screamy bits, but mostly it's cleans that sound a little bit like John Baisley from Baroness, a little bit. Okay, so Baroness meets Mastodon with some goofy, sci-fi themes thrown in there and some hardcore beats like the band Turnstile. The second track, Frozen Hearts, takes me to a Mastodon album like Blood Mountain with this dark progressive riffage and ridiculous rapid fire instrumentals. You know, the drums and the bass are just tearing it up with runs and fills. Plenty of moments from across the album sound like that particular era of Mastodon. And I say it's dark, but you know, it's pretty goofy, pretty campy actually, and the overall emotional effect is pretty light, pretty fun, uh, despite this gloomy metal chug-a-lug thing. The guys can seriously play, and more than anything, this is just some fast, fun, and ferocious hard rock meets progressive metal. A similarly light and playful album, but in a very different way, is next on my list, the New York band The Filibuster Saloon. The Filibuster Saloon is avant-garde prog with some strong Canterbury and jazz ties. It's got a strong piano and percussive foundation, you know, with the drums pinning together all these very whimsical acoustic instruments. Marimba and xylophone and cello and violin and bassoon and a little accordion. Definitely some quirky stuff with very whimsical compositional choices at every turn. These ridiculous long jazzy riffs like on the closing track JFK Jr. Uh, which just has some amazing bass playing, which is really most of the album. This is a very prog album in that way, you know, it can't sit still for one minute. Yet because of the very cheery, very joyous melodies and orchestral backbone, it has kind of this lightness and this variety uh, that's just more interesting to me than some of the stock progressive metal out there. Definitely one to check out if you like your instrumental jazzy prog with plenty of melodies and a quirky edge to it. I recently did a top 10 psychedelic pop albums of the 2010s decade video, which I'll link below. Um, but in that, I, I rediscovered Vinyl Williams, who I think is one of the more consistent artists in psychedelic pop, um, you know, certainly over the last five or six years. Uh, but it's it's not a sound that's in vogue anymore like it was 10 years ago, which is why I think he's pretty underrated right now. And this next one is another album by Vinyl Williams called Eterna. Vinyl Williams is actually better known as a visual artist, and he does all his own album covers in this amazing, surrealist, almost kaleidoscopic sort of look. But the guy is no slouch as a musician. This is some ornate dream pop with a hazy psychedelic sheen brought on by layers of synths and washed out guitars. You'll hear bands like uh, Stereolab from the 90s or Broadcast with a cinematic approach to 60s surf rock and psychedelia. 
uh, your fair share of Beach Boys for sure, which you'll hear clear as day on the second track, Waking Up. I don't think Williams' music has really changed much from album to album. He definitely sticks to his guns. And sometimes it does get a little samey and especially with that very lackadaisical vocal tone, which doesn't have too much oomph. And I'm still waiting for that standout album that just has fantastic songs from beginning to end. But Eterna is the closest for me in a few albums, and it really is a nice sound that combines these ethereal, heavenly textures with these sharp, very upbeat and snappy rhythms. The bass lines and the melodies and the harmonies are always fantastic on his albums. Next up is a jazz album that rides the line between synthetic and organic, and also between a, a very free-flowing improvisational live performance and a carefully crafted studio effort. High Pulp is a collective as you might call it in the jazz world instead of band, with a few albums in the last few years, and this one's called Days in the Desert. I'm a big fan of the kind of hip hop and drum and bass influences all over the percussion on this album, which kind of floats back and forth from sounding organic to sounding digitized. And they're also leaning into the sounds of the 90s, a band like Tortoise with the contemplative, experimental nature. They even have Jeff Parker feature as a guest on the song Unified Dakotas. There's some very trippy acid jazz here with this rugged urgency and intensity to it. But there's also the dreaminess of cool jazz with these laid back sax and guitar lines. And of course there is a healthy dose of Donald Byrd or Herbie Hancock's jazz funk era with a real punch, a real harumph to the bass hits, you know, going back again to that hip hop thing. All in all, this super deep, super textured album that I still haven't quite wrapped my head around. If any of that sounds good to you, you know, if you like the bands Bad Bad Not Good or Tortoise or um, a more recent band The Comet Is Coming, then definitely check out High Pulp. This next one is from an incredibly prolific prog artist who I'm just late to the party on, to be honest. and. Um, I've heard bits and pieces of this expansive discography ranging numerous bands, uh, but never quite stayed the course long enough to really get it. And that is from Neil Morse and his album, Joseph the Dreamer Part One. I do like Spock's Beard. Spock's Beard is a great band. Uh, and Neil has gone on just to do so much in the past 20 years. And like many biblical stories, the story of Joseph is one of profound depth and countless eternal themes. So I think these two are made for each other. You got Prague and a Bible story. I mean, it's a sure hit. But I gotta be honest, I just can't get into the whole uh, rock opera sort of thing, especially when done just so literally, you know, moments like uh, Joseph's brothers throwing him into the pit or Potiphar's wife accusing Joseph, you know, it's all just a little bit too ham-fisted or something. It honestly might have a little bit more to do just with my feelings in musical theater overall. I love to see it live. I loved performing it back in high school days, you know, but I just don't love to listen to it. And for the most part, I just don't find these songs interesting enough to really keep me coming back. They feel more like prog pastiche than something fresh. So I know I, I have to keep digging, you know, I have to keep looking for, uh, these albums, these gems in this huge discography that I love because I do love Spock's Beard and I just haven't found the right one for me, I guess. And I'm sorry to all my prog friends. I feel like I'm like, this is a huge mea culpa moment or something, but I just can't get into this. I try, I try, and I can't do it. Although with an album this accessible and with this length, there are some moments to love. I think of Gold Dust City. I really like that song. I like that vocal. Um, I think of the overture that starts things off or the very Eric Whitaker choral moment that comes out of nowhere. The Japanese House's second album, The End It Always Does, is finally here. And if you're not familiar, Amber from the Japanese House makes some of the most lovely and pristine indie pop. It just sparkles. Water. 
I followed her in her early years and she was really he's anonymously under this name and she just had such a knack for production and songwriting that's carried over into these first two albums uh, despite outsourcing the production duties. 2019's Good at Falling was filled with great songs and great ideas, a lot of them written on guitar it seemed, you know, a lot of guitar on the album, but accompanied by this bouncing electropop. Really shiny, really glistening, but still with a very indie aesthetic, you know, that's her thing and it's, it's really a wonder why she hasn't got more mainstream attention. But I think what it might be or what it might have something to do with is just her very low vocal tone. You know, she doesn't have that sickly soprano range of a lot of the pop icons out there. This new album has all the same tendencies, you know, just the, the general sound play of it and those bouncing beats on Touch Yourself or Sad to Breathe. But as a group of songs, I find this album decent at best, really. I, do have a couple favorites, but it's not nearly as consistent as the last album. I find the, the slight leaning into an Americana kind of sound to be a little boring, a little bland, you know, it just doesn't have the same progressions and melodies. They're not nearly as captivating as they were on that last one. But if you like your smooth pop music that is a little more sophisticated than your average top 40 stuff, you know, a little more nuanced, a little more thoughtful, then I definitely recommend The Japanese House. I actually mentioned these next two artists earlier in the video, which is pretty weird, but they did a collaborative album. Uh, it's a band Turnstile, which is probably one of the more breakout rock bands of the 2010s so far. And then the very uh, modern jazz band, Bad Bad Not Good. When I get to heaven, will I I love Turnstile's 2018 album, Time and Space, and actually reviewed it on the channel. Didn't love the 2021 album, Glow On, so much, but weirdly it's that album, Glow On, that really caught on and made this band huge. Although it's not that weird when actually listening to that album because the production is so polished and it's got a really unique genre crossover thing going on. Uh, you know, the vocals have a ton of personality and some big hooks. I just found it a little bit style over substance, um, but they've turned some of these tracks into these sleek jazz arrangements with Bad Bad Not Good, and it's really cool. You got Mystery, which turns this pop banger into a seductive jazz tune with electric piano and oh, swirling woodwinds. And I love the, the Moog bass and the funky hand drums on Underwater Boy. Bad Bad Not Good could totally make a career out of this, you know, recontextualizing, reinterpreting uh, the, the songs of different bands with totally different styles. And now for something completely different. Uh, still jazz, but not nearly as lush as Bad Bad Not Good. It's John Carroll Kirby with actually his eighth album called Blowout. This is an LA producer and pianist. He plays a new age 80s inspired electronic jazz sound with electric pianos and flutes and steel drums and bleeps and bloops. It's all very West Coast yacht rock, you know, except not rock, like definitively not rock. I love the, the Eastern flute melodies and funky underpinning of Sun Go Down. The song Mates is another clear standout with this beat and this flute melody that just won't quit. There's kind of a Hollywood and an 80s sheen to it that makes it fun and, and you know, lighthearted and it just sounds like somebody walking down the sunny boulevard with their sunglasses. But hints of melancholy and overall cheapness kind of reveal that maybe this life isn't all it's cracked up to be. You know, there's definitely a, a sense of humor here. I don't think the writing here is, is quite strong enough to make this a lot more than a mood setting or a kind of study playlist type of record, uh, just functionally. Um, but if that's all it is, then it's a good one of those. I gotta mention one more prog album because this thing is really cool and I just started listening to it. It's a Quebec progressive rock band called Poop. Not Poop. That's P-O-U-R-P-R-E, which I looked it up and it just translates to purple. Oh, 
this is a bonkers album. You know, the first song alone, it kind of starts like 21st century schizoid man, you know, that kind of energy. And it also has like reggae in the song and some violin prog with a great, great guitar solo in the middle of the track over top of this frenetic bass line. The song builds and then falls and then builds again. You know, it's such a good first impression, very odd, uh, very avant-garde, you know, a, a little comedic, uh, but awesome. The second track is Nebulous or Nebula. Uh, it's more of an atmospheric Pink Floyd type of song with this taunting female vocal, which eventually goes like full great gig in the sky on us, you know, a little obnoxious, but if you're in the right headspace, then it's pretty good. There's also kind of this twinkly emo style guitar tone, which, you know, there's just very odd combinations of sounds and genres that work beautifully. The rest of the album just goes all over the place. You know, every instrumentalist is killing it. And I love just the, the very frenetic energy to it. You know, it's very Mr. Bungle in that kind of way. And I just had to mention it. Okay, that's it. Those are all the new albums from this year that I've been listening to in August. I also did a Coheed and Cambria tier list video um, a couple days ago. Uh, and it's really not doing well so far. So I'm going to link that as well because I love doing those kind of videos and I want to do more. Um, so you know, I want to spread the word. If you haven't yet, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate this new wave of subscribers over the last few days. And as always, thank you so much for watching.